Hi, this is Doug with Database by Doug with a video on primary keys. Uh, pretty foundational material, uh, but a little more conceptual. So I'll do some demos, but mostly this is uh, talking about the concept of a primary key for this video. Also note that I'm starting off with a modified version of the categories table from Northwinds just to simplify the demo. So um, primary keys have two purposes. They're meant to guarantee access to every record in a table and to uniquely distinguish a record from all other records in the table. So this is done by requiring two things out of a primary key. The primary key has to be not null. Primary key has to be unique across records in that table. So the not null makes sure that there's at least one column that's not null. So if I were to have a table uh, that had that would allow nulls in every column then what I could have is null 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 all the way across and um, I wouldn't have at least one field that was non null so in that case if I've got a not null then when I do a where category ID equals seven then this guarantees that I'm either going to get all the categories with an ID of seven um, and that there's no record with an unknown ID that might be seven. So if I had a null here as a category ID, I might go, oh, uh, I don't know what the value is, and under the covers or unknown to me, it actually is a seven, right? So when I say it's not null, I don't have any nulls with unknown values in this column. Now the second thing that we need is that it be unique. So the unique makes sure that when I request a record, I'm going to get at most one record. So when I do this where category ID equals seven, this guarantees that, uh, that either I'm going to get a single record uh, or I'm going to get no record. And if I get no record, then I can definitively say that there is no record with a category ID of seven. Now, this is especially important when I do things like I want to delete something. If I do a delete the record where category ID equals seven, I know at most I'm going to get rid of one record, right? Or if I'm going to update a record, I know that if I do an update where category ID equals seven, I know at most I'm going to affect one record. Now, um, tables don't absolutely require a primary key. Now, if you're in a relational database, it's likely that you're working in a transaction processing kind of context, and you're going to want a primary key. Uh, so, you know, these things are, uh, a primary key is what creates some data quality, guarantees access, uh, you know, um, and has some significant performance benefits, uh, you know, for lookups especially. Um, but, you know, there are situations in maintenance or if I'm just, uh, you know, in a different context where I might want to dump a bunch of records into a table and move them or, or do a little bit of manipulation and then move them. And those checks about uniqueness and not null, uh, when I want to do those on a million records or a billion records, they can have some performance issues. So if you're not in this context of transaction processing, you may not want a primary key. But if you are, then you, you do want a primary key. So consider my uh, modified DB by, uh, DB by Doug uh, categories table. I happen to know that this category ID is the primary key, but how would I know it otherwise? So I'm going to go through a couple of different ways. So you could come over here and in the object explorer here, uh, you know, expand the tables, uh, expand uh, the the particular table, expand columns, and see there that the category ID is marked as PK for primary key. It's marked as not null, and it actually has a little key icon next to it. So that's one way to know what the primary key for a table is. Another way would be to put the uh, table into a diagram. So what I've done is I've created a, a diagram. I'm going to take this table and uh, add it. And when we look at that, we can see that there's a little yellow uh, indicator saying that this is the primary key. So if you see the diagram of the database, uh, you can look at it easily and see what are the primary keys. Now, probably the, the most definitive way is to script out the table and actually see the full definition. So if I come over here to my table and I right click on it 
and I choose script table as create to new query window, I can see the uh, definitive definition of this table. Uh, we're going to talk about a, a, an abbreviated version of this just to take out some details and focus on the important parts. So there it is. Create table. There's the name of the table. There's the field in question. It's an integer, not null is specified here in the column definition or the field definition. And then down here in a constraint, here's the name of the constraint. It starts with a PK. Uh, the database came up with that name for me. And uh, primary key is the piece that says unique. And the field that is a part of the primary key is only category ID. So you can't specify a primary key with multiple fields. In this case, it's a single key. It's uh, kept in order ascending. And so in the actual uh, page where the records are kept, this record is next to that record, is next to that record, is next to that record. It's not necessarily really next to that record, but conceptually you can think of them as logically uh, they'll be stored. All the ones with similar category ID values will be on the same data page. So um, now uh, let's make sure that my definition is doing what it's supposed to do. So I shouldn't be able to put in a null for the primary key. So let's go into uh, my category DBB, DBBD categories and edit the top 200 rows. And notice that I can edit this. And if I try to leave it blank there and put in something like office supplies, it will give me this error. And in particular, it says cannot insert the value null into the column category ID. So I try to do an insert with a null category ID. It has blocked that. Let's say I go to a record that already exists. So it had a category ID of eight. And I try to change it to a null. Again, it says, hey, uh, that cell, right, or that field does not allow a null. So I have to escape out of that. So I can't insert one and I can't update one to a null. Now, let's see if I could um, use a duplicate one. So let's put the number eight in, which would duplicate the seafood. Let's just say office. And here I also get a violation of the primary key constraint, right? Cannot insert a duplicate key. So all of these operations, there's some extra work that the database engine is doing uh, for you to check these things. But what they're, they're also, uh, when it checks the, those and guarantees that there's no nulls and there's uniqueness, then you get some guarantees when you perform queries against it. All right, so uh, let's continue on. All right. Let's review. We're guaranteed that no record in the categories table has an unknown category ID. That would be unknown meaning null. We're guaranteed that no two records in the categories table have the same category ID. And I just showed that that can't happen. So um, when we do something, uh, some query, we get this guarantee of, you know, my queries are going to either come back with one Right, so if I do this, I'm either going to get one record or zero records. And again, that's particularly important when I'm doing updates and deletes um, that I'm guaranteed I'm only going to get one record. So does this number eight actually mean anything? Like, you know, uh, does it uh, help me remember that this is seafood? Or, uh, and the answer is no, it doesn't mean anything. All it is is unique and not null. And that's really all I require out of a primary key. Now, I could also make sure that the category name is unique, right? So I don't have two categories with the same name. I could also guarantee or require that categories have um, uh, always have a value, that they're not null, right? Um, so, so I can have other fields, but this is the special one, and, you know, this is... Uh, an integer it's easy to to uh, compare against and, and things like that so so just having one primary key doesn't mean that you can't also require another field to be not null or unique and you in this case you might might want that so um, 
Now let's go look at the definition of the actual categories table from Northwind. So, and I've already scripted it out here. And the piece that you'll want to, that's different is that this is an identity field. What that means is that um, it's still not null, it's still the primary key, right? So it's still unique. But the identity uh, definition means that the database engine is going to determine my primary key values for me. So the category ID is the primary key. It's going to start creating values for me. And partly, I can't go and create the values myself, right? So um, we would call this a synthetic primary key. It's a, it's a primary key that gets kind of synthesized or created. It doesn't mean anything. And specifically, the identity 1-1 one, one means start at 1 and then add 1 each time I need a new primary key value, right? Begin with one and increment by one each time. So this also means that no one else, me or some system, cannot create or change the value of a category ID, right? So I've completely given it over to the database engine. So in order to prove this, let me edit the top 200 of the categories table, not my database by Doug categories table. And the first thing you'll note is that the uh, the records here they're grayed out so I can't actually edit these so I can't I'm trying to type in there I can't actually edit the value so I can't create a new value I can't go in and change in a value so what will happen is as I create a new something it's going to get the new value, right? So it, it got the value 10 from the database engine. Now, the other thing about this is that these numbers will never be reused. So notice that I've put in two extra records, the nine and 10 records. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete those, All right? And notice I'm gonna put in a new record for office supplies and the value that it gets is 11. So notice that now that nine and 10 were used at one time, uh, they will not be reused and it looks like I've skipped over. Is that a problem? Well, no, the category ID doesn't mean anything anyway. It's just there to be unique and not null and 11 is unique, 11 is not null. That's all I need out of it. So um, the synthetic key technique is uh, can be pretty, pretty helpful. So um, number one, I just say, hey, I don't have to figure out a unique value. Let the database engine figure out a unique value. Um, and the purpose of this is so that once I use a key, I'm guaranteed to never use it again. So in a situation where maybe I've archived some of the categories, put them in another table somewhere else, and if I were to reuse the category ID of seven, then I could confuse those two categories. So, you know, if they're actually two different ones and I was just reusing the key value, uh, I could confuse those two records. So, why is this good? Well, you know, humans might accidentally reuse an archived primary key value, right? I just, uh, I don't know that I'm gonna keep a list of used primary key and say, don't use that again. Um, also, when you, put a meaning onto a column, sometimes you need to change that. So for instance, something like a category name, if I were to say um, condiments, you know, maybe I would change that to salsas or something, or, you know, I might, might want to change the name. But if I change something like uh, condiments to salsas, would I realize later that those were actually the same category at one time? So I, I really don't want to change a, uh, or use a meaningful column as the primary key. So the synthetic key does exactly what is needed. It's not null and it's uh, unique and it doesn't do anything else. Now, the other thing about it is that internal to the database engine, this can be highly performant. So um, when the database engine doesn't need to check a new primary key value for uniqueness, uh, that saves a lot of time and especially if I'm incrementing then what will happen is that the 
new record will go to the end of the table all the time. So it doesn't need to search for a new location for uh, the record. It just goes to the end. So this can be really uh, helpful for performance. Now, in summary, primary keys don't need to do anything else except be unique and not null. Uh, this guarantees that you get unique access to every record in the table and synthetic keys like uh, specified with the identity can be helpful in keeping all the key values unique especially across uh, archives or um, you know um, data that's been moved into another table so this is uh, all of these things are especially helpful in OLTP type systems and as a matter of fact they're almost required of those kinds of systems for them to keep the data uh, clean and high quality so a little foreshadowing primary keys also are referenced by foreign keys so the next video will be about foreign keys and uh, even more foreshadowing primary key values are used by indexes too so your choice of a primary key is and its data type are, is really important for indexing so thanks for watching uh, again I'm Doug with database by Doug thank you